Hey everybody, how you doing? All of a Joyce on the 16th day of Christmas. My true love gave to me no singing this time. The Dungeons patch. It's finally live. Patch 0.8 for Swords and Sandals and Mortals is now up on Steam for you to try out. And uh, I'm pretty excited to see what you guys think of this because this one took about five, five and a half weeks to put together, you know, with a little break in there, of course, for me to go on holidays last week. Uh, I've been back at the Forge for a few days, just finishing things off and uh, threw it up yesterday. Uh, so far, the feedback's been pretty good. Uh, people seem to be enjoying it. If you remember Swords and Sandals 5, uh, it definitely has sort of a nod to that in terms of there's, you know, items you can interact with, there's traps, there's little puzzles and things like that. And there are some special dungeon bosses at the end. For those familiar with classic Swords and Sandals, these uh, will be sort of uh, a nice little Easter egg for you guys. So today, I'm actually just going to play through a bit of the uh, the final dungeon product and um, show you guys a little bit about it, talk a bit about how it works in the dungeon. If you saw last week's video, this is more of the same, but at the end of it, I'm also going to tell you a little bit about the roadmap to the end of the game, which not that long away. We're pretty close to the full launch of the game. So let's jump into the dungeons now and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we have a character that I made earlier. I was playing through him yesterday. It's Big Snacks the Yaron. And he is a level 16 warrior who has just defeated the first grand champion, uh, Captain Seabelt. Now, he's made his way over from Shackleford through Fator to the first dungeon here. There's eight dungeons on the map, and you can see by the number 10 there, there is uh, this is a level 10 dungeon. Dungeon 1. Uh, he's got no dungeon supplies, which would make the journey through a dungeon a bit difficult. We could, how much gold do we have? We could actually stock up on something. So let's go back to Fator first and encamp there. Because it's important to try and get um, some supplies. Supplies are actually pretty expensive. Um, but we'll get ourselves a slice of pizza for 3,000. <laughs> this is good pizza. Now these are designed to be expensive because uh, it's meant to be a challenge. You don't um, necessarily need all the items. You can find them in the dungeons, but if you have lots of money and want to spend them in there, it's worth it. Let's get ourselves a torch and a shovel. Okay. Now we head back to the dungeon. put a shovel, torch, slice of pizza. You can have up to eight items in the dungeon. They're the things we're taking. You can clear that if you had more things. Add them back in. Nice simple interface. And here we go. All right, so with the dungeon, uh, I recommend you use the arrow keys. I mean, the um, Q, W, W, A, S, D keys and Q and E to strafe. Uh, you can look around like that, move like this. Uh, you can also, yeah, when you hit an item, you can interact with it. This is the ladder. You can go back up to the top of the dungeon if you wish. Um, here's the trap. So let's have a look at this trap. Avoid trap, 40% chance. If we'd had a trap kit, we could have um, disarmed that trap. Oh, we took some damage. And the damage you take is actually a percentage of your total health. Here's a torch over here. So... We can actually use this torch to re, uh, restore our light. Our light's at 86%, but we can turn that back up to 100 if we want. It's worth saving that to when your light is low, but let's move through dungeon. You can move with the arrow, the buttons here as well if you wish, but you know, I kind of prefer, or even the arrow keys on your keyboard if you want. Um, but I kind of prefer the classic sort of quake keys as they call them back in the old quake days for those remember that classic game. We've also got a food meter up here, so you want to keep an eye on that. Uh, if that goes too low, you start getting hungry. Now, here's our objective. With dungeon floor one, find and push the lever. The first dungeon you visit, the quest is always find and push the lever, the level one dungeon. But when you get to this, um, dungeon two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they have multiple floors and they have harder quests than that. But for now, we're looking around. There's a trap that can be avoided. Here's a chest. Search chest, destroy chest. Let's search. Failed, found nothing. There's nothing in the chest. You can see the chest is empty now. 
But there's a barrel. What's in the barrel? Let's search the barrel. Hey, we found a roast chicken. That's really useful because that'll help us with food. In here is also a bookshelf. Found nothing. And a shrine. <laughs> pray. The malevolence ignores your prayers. We're an evil character, so we pray to the malevolence. Good characters will play, pray, of course, to Saul the One. Down here, what's this light? Kick the door. We don't have a... Um, Key or even a lockpick, so we're going to try kicking it. That failed. We'll come back to that because it looks... Let's try it again. Okay. There is the exit to the dungeon, but we can't go there until... Um, oh, let's restore our light. Until we have found the lever. You can see it's blocked off. Okay, we had a shovel. That was handy because this is a rock wall. Dig it up. Here's another trap avoid that oh we took some damage but you can you know you move on once you take the damage restore our light again oh another door to be kicked we've only got a bit of health left so oh we died from kicking a door tragic defeat you know unless you're playing permadeath defeat in this game is just a minor setback so let's keep going back into the dungeon and this time the dungeon uh, regenerates itself in another randomized way. So you can see here, this rock was not, wrought war was not there last time, and neither was this cauldron. So let's go this way, drink from the cauldron. Oh, yeah, took. Whatever you drank made you terribly sick. It's a random chance, you know, it's always random, but um, there is going to be a skill coming soon that will allow you better dice rolls in dungeons. Failed in the bookshelf. Restore some light. We've still got the roast chicken from last time as well. We found a lockpick. Awesome. Ah, uh, what's this? Uh, okay, here's the lever we're looking for. Look out for that red light. Somewhere in the distance, you hear the rumbling of cogs and gears, and you hear that triumphant music, of course. Let's light our torch again. You can also douse the wall torch. I'll show you what happens if you do that. It goes dim. You don't really want to do that most of the time, but there are some quests. There's a random quest each time you go into most dungeons. Some of them ask you to douse torches see if you can get anything from the bookshelf failed sometimes if you search a bookshelf you uh, can gain a stat point one thing I want to point out is when you interact with these items unless they're quest specific um, there is a chance you can gain stats or lose stats so just be a little kind of careful of that for those who really panic about losing stats in the scheme of things you get so many stat points it doesn't really matter don't worry about it too much but you know you can lose them some people get really upset about, oh, I went on an adventure and I lost one stat point. At the end of the day, your character sometimes ends up with 100 vitality and 80 attack and so on. One point is not going to be the difference between you beating or losing the Starbound Gladiator fight. So, chill out. <laughs> I mean, I seriously have gotten some negative reviews in the game because of I lost one stat point in the game. Can't please everyone. Okay, oh, we burned ourselves on the wall torch. Always a danger of that. Okay. Let's, um, I just want to show you here, while we're in the dungeon, let's use our food. 70, eat our pizza, back up to 100. That gave us plus 60 food. That was a really good piece of food item there. And finally, now notice here that the entrance to the next level is now visible. The dungeon grate has gone, so let's go forward and go down. And now we're at the first boss fight. This is the dungeon boss fight. Um, Bors the Mighty, a chieftain who rose to lead the Sons of Frost during the Bloody Crusades. Uh, for those who remember Swords of Sam's Crusader, Bors. You can fight Bors. This is not the real Bors. It's an avatar of Bors created by a Bargle to test you. Because Bors died, actually. Died at the hands of um, someone. I can't remember, can't remember my lore in the game, but it's in the swordsandsandals.com term of lore. All right. I will throw your bones in a glacier. Okay. You can check out this, yeah. Bargle's created this avatar and his likeness to test your battle tactics. He's got some good stats there. Um, yeah, he beats us in just about every stat except for intellect. <laughs> and ours is three. So Bors is even more stupid than we are. All right. But this is going to be a tough fight. At level 20, you know, so it's recommended you only enter the dungeons when you're truly ready. Let's see how we go, though. Our Yaren's a pretty good fighter, though. Ooh, use these big war cry. Let's try and rip his limbs off. Missed. 
In the new patch, you've actually got a lower chance of uh, ripping the limbs off bosses because some people were finding that a little bit of a cheat code. So I've made it so it's harder. You've got a 15% chance to rip the limbs off bosses, 30% against most people. All right, we can't use our skills at the moment because we're demoralized, but we can use our regular attacks. And I want you to notice something as well. The um, stats are now... Hit chances are now improved. So... Um, you now have a minimum 30% hit chance for quick and um, minimum hit chance for power attacks at 10%, maximum of 90%. And every point you put into attack improves it by 0.5%. Every point you put into vitality and stuff improves your melee hit chance by 0.25%. So basically made it so it's not just something you can min max as easily. I didn't want fights where you'd have 99% hit chance or 1% hit chance. This became a bit of a grind for a lot of people. So that's now gone, and I hope you like this new way of doing things. Ooh, big hit. He's frozen us. But healing thimble, we don't want to use that just yet. Let's rest. Get rid of that frozen status soon, but big power attack. Okay, so. Actually, we're doing a riot against him. We're a bit of a melee tank character. Oh, but he does hit hard, so what have we got? Still, this being frozen has really made it so I can't use my skills in battle, which I really need to be able to. Okay. He hit me hard for a long, long time with his frozen nonsense. Okay, there we go. Let's try the warrior strike. Oh, that was good. And got any other skills? Barbarian Storm, 114 damage. Oh, how do you carry that? What about Leap of Lions? What's the 114 damage versus 153 power attack? Let's try the power attack. Low chance. Oh, we got him. He's almost got his... Lost all his armor. Kept him with a couple of medium... Oh. Oh, big hit from Boars. Is he going to spare it? Ah, oh, he's not even going to spare us. But Bargle generously offers you a chance to retry this fight. This is something you can only do in dungeons. Uh, you can't actually do this in um, most fights. But because I figured with dungeons, some of them being multiple levels, I don't want you to have to go through the whole dungeon crawl every single time. For now, though, let's exit back to the overworld. You painfully stumble your way out of the dungeon, humbled and achy. Yeah, that's the Dungeons update. What do you think, guys? Um, I think it's one of those things you could really expand in a crazy way and make a whole game around it, something like, you know, Legend of Grimrock style. Uh, I would have loved to have had combat in the dungeons, but that just would require a whole new chunk of time because I'd have to translate every skill to 3D and all the, you know, the leaping skills and the range skills and everything. I thought about that, but it just was just one of those things that is, you know, Unfortunately, this is a business and there is, uh, you know, financial considerations to everything. Every day I spend on the game, uh, you know, essentially costs me money. And while the game is profitable, it's not a massive monster hit. I'm going to be completely honest with you. And at some point, I got to wrap it up. It's been nearly two years in development. In February, it will be two years. So the time has come to, you know, put that roadmap, uh, you know, lock it down, get the game through to completion and launch it. And on that note, I actually want to just talk about what is next in the game. Next week, I'll be releasing the Adventure Tree, which is basically the talent tree towards adventures. Gives you a bunch of little talents and um, just perks that make your adventures easier. Things like, um, you know, increasing your the gold you get per day or making the speed you ride your horse uh, or, you know, your um, skills in the dungeons get improved all of them overall slightly, that kind of thing. There is only about half the amount of talents in the adventure tree as there are in the other talent trees, but I think it'll just be a fun little bit for those who think, well, I'm not sure what I want to spend on, but you know, I've got a few talent points to spare. A lot of people have kind of seen these items in the game and gone, what is, you know, plus two to mercantile? What is mercantile? Is this a bug? Well, that was always planned and that is coming soon. Also next week, achievements will, you know, hopefully be in the game. I've got the esteem, um, 
achievement system starting to work in the game. I'm going to test that out. There will probably be roughly 30 or 40 achievements for you to um, check out in the game. And I'll try and add more of those in future patches as well because I know a lot of people um, you know, are completionists and love achievement hunting in games like this. So that's for you guys. After that, basically the single player portion of the game is complete. There's not much else to add. I want to add a de-enchanting panel so you can actually, you know, uh, remove blueprints and things from your armor and weapons. That'll come as well. But there's nothing else content-wise to add. I feel like the game is pretty complete now with, you know, almost 70 champions all told. That's way bigger than any other Sword and Sandals game I've ever made. Probably over twice as big as the next closest one. And, you know, 36 towns and tons of stuff going on in this game. I don't feel like there's anything else I need to add to the game at this point. Except for, of course, multiplayer. And I have been testing that yesterday with my programmer over in Canada, Evan, who was working on the multiplayer side of things. Evan has done a great job um, putting this together. The lobbies work. You can talk to each other. You can challenge um, people and then go in and fight. And then you can come back to the lobby. We still need to tie in the shop system to that and sort of do a bit of bug fixing and so on. That is probably about, I'm going to say, maybe five or six weeks away from being ready. And then we'll wrap this up in time for the end of January, beginning of February. The game will go into full launch. And that will be the end of things. Um, if the game all of a sudden becomes massively popular, like we're talking, you know, 10 times the popularity mega hit, then I'm going to have to start looking at extra content and DLCs and stuff like that. But realistically, I mean, I'm going to be level with you guys. You guys know me pretty well. I'm usually pretty honest with you. This game is done about as well as uh, it could. I had hoped for it to be, you know, a bit bigger and a bit more popular. For some reason, the, the streamers and YouTubers didn't really pick it up in the way that I hoped. Uh, Critical, uh, my good friend Charlie, um, did a video on it before, and that really helped. And hopefully there'll be other videos like that. Uh, but you can't rely on these these things forever. And while I'm really glad that the game has had the success it had, it hasn't been the monster hit I had hoped. I'm going to do another whole video about this at some point and just talk about my thoughts about what I'd hoped for the game and what it's achieved and so on. We'll just save that for full release because there's always that chance that, you know, there might be something else. Your reviews really help on Steam. So if you've been reviewing the game, I just want to say thank you so much because it always pushes it up, you know, into that next tier. It's hovering at about 90%. There's been a couple of stubborn holdouts who've played the game for, you know, 40 hours but still go uh, thumbs down because, you know, I didn't like the enchant system or my hit chance was too low or whatever. There's always someone that's going to find, you know, issue with the 5% of the game they didn't like. What I'm learning as I get older is you can't please everyone, so don't try. You know, all you can do is make the best game that you would want to play, given the time you have. You know, that's basically a bastardization of Gandalf's quote. All we have to do is work out what we have to do with the time we have. You know, that kind of thing. I've forgotten what it was. Anyway, speaking of saying thank yous, big shout out to my Patreon supporters, Dane Simino, Daniel Funches, Pookie, Buddy X, Cheese Chow, Brandon K, Ilya Gurovich, Pipuch, Stone God, Timmy Boy, X Up Omega, Jeffro of Hex 3D, Hopeless, Eunice, and Noah Gurdjian. Noah, Noah, Noah! All heroes, great guys. Uh, these guys sometimes send me messages of support and everything, and um, they get that weekly newsletter. You know, mostly weekly. Sorry, I've missed one the other day. Um, but you guys just, I've just really appreciated your support over the last few years. And if you want to be a Patreon, that would make my day. And it really would. I mean, um, I've got a small Patreon. It used to be bigger, but I, um, you know, I really scaled back the rewards and everything. You know, whether you're a patron or not, it ultimately doesn't affect my, you know, the bottom line, but it really does just. It, it helps every dollar helps you know in these tough times and you know who knows what's going to happen with whiskey barrel studios next year it might be the last year i can remain um financially viable papa needs a hit at some point but you know we'll see how we go with two new games uh, in the works next year uh knock on wood um let's see where we are this time next year it could be big fingers crossed anyway my friends that's it it for now Download that new Dungeons update if you haven't tried it already. Let me know what you think. There will be patches going up today and next week. And then there will be achievements and the adventure tree and a few other cool things. Um, also, I want to just a big shout out to the subscribers of the channel. Like and 
like and subscribe and all that uh, but we've got over a thousand people now and that's awesome then the view count isn't that high but um we get lots of comments i get lots of comments and that's really cool because um for every video i put out i get you know dozens of comments and i really find that awesome in fact the YouTube is actually probably the best way I have of uh, engaging with you guys, even more than the Discord. There are the same few people that sort of interact on Discord, but you know, I just see dozens and dozens of great comments on not just the most recent videos, but all the old videos as well. So that's just cool to see you guys trolling through the old Whiskey Barrel Studios channel videos, and you know, just really taking an interest in Sword and Sandals. And by extension, myself and what I do as a game developer. Next year is going to be really interesting. I'm going to do a whole other video on next year um, in the weeks to come as well. As I kind of run out of Sword and Sandals content, we'll be starting to talk about other stuff. So I hope you guys join me for that. Uh, one more video to come before Christmas Day. Um, until then, good luck in the dungeons and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.